Starting off our list at number 10 is Katherine Heigl. We gotta be honest here and say there's probably a few interviews that affected her career, but one back in 2008 pretty much landed her on Hollywood's blacklist. She took the lead in the 2006 movie Knocked Up, and the movie, as well as her performance, was well received. Apparently not by the actress herself though, who opened up about how she felt about the movie later on in 2008. In the January issue of Vanity Fair, she said the movie was, I quote, a little sexist. It paints women as shrews, as human humorless and uptight and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun loving guys. It exaggerated the characters and I had a hard time with it some days. Why is this how you're portraying women? This interview alone was enough for people in Hollywood to turn away from wanting to work with her, but it was sealed when she did another interview in 2008 where she dissed the writing in her show Grey's Anatomy. The actress has to figure out a way to either keep her mouth shut or just choose her words wisely. I'm not a rude person, I'm not an unkind or mean person, I would never go out of my way or consciously try to hurt anyone's feelings or, or make them feel bad or uncomfortable or not be professional and do my job. I like my job. And at number nine is Paula Abdul. Back in January 2007, the American Idol judged an interview that went viral instantly. Throughout the video, which happened to be filmed, she slurred her words, wobbled, swayed, and spoke a bunch of nonsense, basically. News anchors from Q13 Fox News Live streamed Paula from New York to do a live interview with her, but because of how she was acting, they thought there was some sort of connection issue. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if she can hear us right now. They kept saying there must be a problem and that she can't hear them properly. But that wasn't really the case at all. Even when she did respond to their questions, she was acting like she was highly intoxicated. She was closing her eyes, slurring her words, just acting kind of all manic and weird. Later, she tried to explain, saying that there was a connection error at first, and they had a station from Alabama in her ear, along with the Fox News at the same time. But once they fixed it, she blamed the rest of the erotic behavior on just being tired. She said, fatigue and exhaustion just added to the whole thing looking so disoriented. But no alcohol and no drugs, absolutely no. The interview had a huge effect on her career. Two years later, she wasn't able to land another contract with American Idol. The world didn't see much of her for years until she snagged a judging role on So You Think You Can Dance. However, her career just hasn't been the same ever since. Sliding into the number eight spot on our list is Five Seconds of Summer. Back in 2015, the band managed to alienate both their fans and a lot of fellow artists and celebrities in just one interview. And since then, the world hasn't heard much of them since. In December 2015, their interview with Rolling Stone left people really pissed off. Michael Clifford, who admitted during the interview that he was hungover, bashed the American Music Awards, which they performed at the night before. He said the show was compromised and had, I quote, a lot of fake people. He also called out Justin Bieber and said he thinks he hates them for no apparent reason at all. Luke Hemmings from the band left fans and parents feeling disgusted after saying, when you put four young dudes on a tour bus playing theaters and arenas, you're going to have sex with a lot of girls, I guess. We had a good time. The interviewer awkwardly joked back, asking if they slept with multiple girls in one night or at the same time. And he responded with, I feel like I shouldn't say. You can say the possibility of that is high. People were pretty repulsed by their interview and things just haven't been the same for their stardom since that day. Next up at number seven is R. Kelly. He did some major damage for his career back in 2008 when he made comments about being with underage girls. But this interview came after he went to trial for being accused of child pornography. Kelly was accused of making a 27 minute sex tape with an underage female, but after going to trial, the jury declared him not guilty on all 14 counts. People were all feeling some type of way about him, some believed him and some didn't. But his interview after the trial didn't help paint a very good self portrait. During an interview with BET, he was straight up asked, do you like teenage girls? After everything that went on with court, you would think his response would be an immediate no. However, he responded by saying, when you say teenage, how young are we talking? He went on to say that he has some 19 year old female friends, but none that are technically illegal. After the interview was aired on BET, Kelly's team saw it and demanded that it never be shown again. It was already too late though, the damage had already been done. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. I gave y'all 30 years of my 
And at number six is Miles Teller. The actor had a promising career, especially after his role in Whiplash back in 2014. But it was after an interview in 2015 where his career took a hit and began to stall. In August 2015, he did an interview with Esquire, and he thought it would be appropriate to tell the female writer and their waitress that the bar glass was modeled after his private parts. He obviously used a much more vulgar term, but I'm definitely not going to repeat it. He was pretty sassy too, trying to demand the writer to cut his meat for him when they're food came. The interview didn't paint the actor in a very positive light and says that things were changed around. After receiving tons of backlash from it, he told a vulture, I quote, if how that story made me look was how I really was, I would think I was the biggest douchebag too. I know who I am and it's not who I was in that story. Since then he hasn't been able to book movies like he used to and has only about 6 credits to his IMDb in the last 4 years. Some of you might not even heard of any of them. Happy through the list at number 5 is the Chainsmokers, another time when a band tried a little too hard to be edgy and just came off as super lame instead. Back in 2016, Billboard did a cover story on the band where they said things that people weren't too thrilled about. Andrew Tagger told the magazine, I quote, We rage every night. My mom's going to hate reading that, but she already knows. But his DJ partner Alex Pals said that they were pros, saying, But you'll never see us getting carried out of a club. We're way too good at drinking. Both band members continued on with the interview and thought it was appropriate to bring up their groupies, even though they both had live-in girlfriends at the time. Alex said, Even before success, was number one. And then Andrew chimed in saying, Like why am I trying to make all this money? I wanted to hook up with hotter girls. I had to date a model. We're just frat bro dudes, you know what I mean? The loving ladies and stuff. And drum roll please, for the worst part of the entire interview, the boys also revealed the size of their private, saying that they measured from tip to tip. Classy. Here we are at number 4 with Gary Coleman. The actor sadly passed away at just 42 years old, so this is in no way to disrespect him, but to share what happened leading up to his very controversial death. The actor always had medical issues, but often didn't like to speak on them. On May 26, 2010, the actor fell down the stairs while at home with his wife and had to go to the hospital after cracking his head. He was treated, but the next day he went unconscious and landed on life support where he died on May 28th. People were suspicious as to what actually happened and rumors began to fly saying that his wife had actually pushed him down the stairs. Now, the only reason that they thought this was because they went to court after she accused him of physically abusing her. The couple was always known for their altercations and even appeared on the show Divorce Court. This is what led to Gary having an interview that impacted his career in a very negative way. One of the female hosts on The Insider asked him if he abuses his wife, and when he wouldn't flat out deny it, she begins to question if it's true or not, and that's basically when he lost it. He ended up saying to her, I quote, Go F yourself. I don't know you. I don't care about you. Your life doesn't matter to me. If you get hit by a bus tonight, I'm not going to care. There is no abuse that goes on in my house. Now, if people believe that I'm waffling, then they can go do what they Did need to do. Did you abuse your wife? Did you abuse her? Did you lay your hand and on her? And you know what? You can go to the same place. Then he storms off the set and tells all of the hosts to go f*** themselves. People were stunned by his anger and reaction, and he wasn't very well received after that. Alright guys, at number 3 is Megan Fox. It is no surprise to anyone anymore that her career started to fizzle away after the Transformers incident when she publicly bashed the director. In 2009, Fox told Wonderland that the director of the film series, Michael Bay, is, I quote, like Napoleon and he wants to create this insane, infamous, madman reputation. He wants to be like Hitler on his sets, and he is. She went on to call him a nightmare to work with and said that he has no skills at all. As a result from her interview remarks, she was fired from Transformers Dark Side of the Moon and was only booking smaller roles and cameos. It wasn't until she later apologized to Bay that she was allowed back in the director's blockbuster movies, which is how she got to star in his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle franchise. However, Bay told GQ it was actually Steven Spielberg who demanded that he hire Fox, and added that she may not have been the most professional actress on set. I thought Michael Bay was someone you don't want to be on bad terms with, but if the real issue is Steven Spielberg, that's even worse. In at number 2 is Charlie Sheen. He has a list of things that all play a factor on why his career came to an end. One of them was his ridiculous and totally inappropriate behavior during his interview with ABC when he confessed to still being on drugs. Actually, when he asked if he still uses drugs, his exact response was, I am on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. It is not available. If you try it once, you will die. Your face will melt off and your children will weep over your exploded body. He went on to talk about sleeping with prostitutes 
suits and said that they are the best at what they do and has no problem admitting that part of his sex life. The entire interview is manic and whack, but no one could ever forget his famous line when asked about how he survived his huge drug binges. He responded with, I have tiger blood in my veins. Since then, it's been an ongoing joke, along with his career. However, rumor has it that he has sobered up and it's possible he will be making a comeback. Taking the number one spot on our list is Tara Reid, only because it was so shocking. The sweet blonde shocked the world after showing up drunk to an interview, or so it appeared. Back in August 2018, she did an interview with Today Extra on Australia's Channel 9 to promote her movie The Last Sharknado. But throughout the interview, she was slurring her words, spoke very quietly, and often just trailed off. When you watch it, there's moments when you feel like she might actually fall asleep. It really makes sense from the first one. It, it really does it. It makes a com like complete circle. And After the interview, rumors started that she was drinking again, which was a problem from her past. She released a statement afterwards, not giving any kind of reasoning for her weird behavior, but insisted that people have no reason to worry about her health. However, people were still very much worried. In at number 10, Megan Fox. If you want to keep your job, it's probably best not to compare your boss to Hitler. During a 2009 interview with Wonderland, actress Megan Fox did just this while describing her boss, the Transformers director, Mike Michael Bay. Not only did this result in her immediate firing from Transformers Dark Side of the Moon, it also led to the actress being blacklisted in Hollywood for the next few years until she apologized to Mr. Bay. Upon reflecting on her being kicked out of the Transformers franchise, Megan told Cosmopolitan Magazine that this was absolutely a low point in her career, but without saying what she said, she wouldn't have learned as quickly as she did. She knew that in order to get her career back, all she had to do was apologize, but she still refused. Fox blames her attitude on being very self-righteous at 23 and not being able to see that this was for the greater good. Probably the greater good of her bank account, I'm imagining. In at number 9, Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl seems to be the type of celebrity that just says yes to every opportunity, and then when she regrets it later, she just openly bashes her decisions in the public eye. The main example of this happening was when she co-starred opposite Seth Rogen for the Judd Apatow film called Knocked Up. When Seth Rogen was asked about this, he said that Catherine and him had a great time while working, but mainly because she was improvising a lot of her own stuff, which was overall great for the film. However, not too long after that, she did an interview with Vanity Fair and expressed just how much she hated the entire movie. Heigl said, It was a little sexist. It paints the women as shrews, as humorless and uptight, and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. It exaggerated the characters, and I had a hard time with it on some days I'm playing such a b why is she being such a killjoy? Why is this how you're portraying women? 98% of the time it was an amazing experience, but it was hard for me to love the movie. Well, Catherine, now it's hard for anyone to really trust you being in their movie, especially after an interview like that. She had some commentary about Knocked Up after it came out. What'd she say? She she didn't like it. She didn't like it? But she was so awesome in it, so it, it, we, it was right. confusing. In number eight, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is the exact polar opposite of what you should do when pursuing a career in Hollywood. He carries with him a terrible offset and onset reputation, and the debacle that he went through in 2011 even led to his contract termination from the show Two and a Half Men. For a while, he was all over the news for everything, substance abuse, domestic violence, and even when he revealed that he was HIV positive. With his history of flying off the drop of a hat and trying to get people fired who speak ill of him, Sheen has had a very difficult time rebuilding his career. Although it's hard to put a pin in just one interview in particular that really ended Sheen's career, there are certainly a bevy of bizarre ones to choose from. Perhaps the worst was when he was on the Today Show for a very candid conversation. People that aren't special, people that don't have tiger blood and, you know, Adonis DNA. Strong people have relapsed. Strong people have started using again. Fools. How do you avoid that? Fools. Trolls. In at number seven, Tom Cruise. During an interview in 2005 with former Today Show host Matt Lauer, Tom Cruise wanted to make it very clear to the host that he knew more about the history of psychiatry than Matt Lauer did. This interview came at the height of the publicity about Tom joining Scientology, which became the painfully awkward main subject for a majority of their discussion. The highlight of the interview, though, was when Tom Cruise was asked about his previous criticism of Brooke Shields and her use of antidepressants, for which the megastar actor responded by calling her a glib. Anytime that Matt wanted to argue how how antidepressants actually have helped people in the past, Tom would constantly dismiss him and just ask that they move on. Do you understand that 
the difference is no, this was no, not Matt, against Matt, her I'm will, ask, though. Matt, but this Matt, wasn't against your question. Will. Matt, I'm asking you a question. I understand Do there's you know? abuse of all of these things. No, you see, here's the problem. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. In number six, Miles Teller. Miles has been involved in more projects following this disaster of an interview, but only because he made a public apology for what he did. For a while following this interview, though, his career seemed to be over. I mean, it really was that offensive to the interviewer that fans condemned the actor for his rude behavior. The young Whiplash actor had plenty of potential until he seemingly closed the door on all future roles with just a single interview. Throughout the 2015 Esquire interview, the actor compared his private parts to a glass, then asked the writer to cut his meat for him at the restaurant where the interview took place, and that he believes that he's better looking than the public thinks he is. Looking back, he admits to being a huge jerk, which is a bit of an understatement to say the least. In at number five, Jesse Eisenberg. Um, do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well, um, you were like the uh, Carrot Top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm a good go thing. Cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over. While promoting the film Now You See Me, Jesse Eisenberg just could not contain his utter disdain for this interview. Right out of the gate, he was on the offensive. The interviewer refers to Morgan Freeman simply as Freeman, for which Jesse then takes real offense to. He then, as you saw, remarks that she's the carrot top of interviewing, which insults the interviewer so badly that she just hurries Jesse to complete a magic trick or whatever so that they can just wrap this whole thing up. The entire interview is just one of the most uncomfortable things that I've ever seen, and this is only number five on the list. Trust me though, if you haven't watched this full interview, you must. It is just such a terrible exchange back and forth between an actor and an interviewer. A true masterclass of what not to do in press interviews. In at number four, Billy Bob Thornton. As great as a career that old Billy Bob has had as an actor, he is also in a band called The Boxmasters. Although oddly enough, whenever he does interviews now, he insists that they only talk about the band and never ever bring up his acting career. Which is really weird considering how prolific this guy was as an actor. You'd think if the interviewer was even a little bit of a fan of his, he would be really disappointed to get this demand before starting the conversation with him. The biggest blow up by far that was viewed as one of his most awkward interviews was when he and his band were on the show called Q for CBC in Canada. The interviewer tried his best to talk to Billy, but he always answered in a very confused way, confusing and confused way, which left the band feeling awkward to answer the questions on his behalf. Uh, I wasn't instructed to, uh, I'm, in, I'm instruct, I'm not really instructed. You guys are here as a band, you're performing, mm. uh, but I- Well, I, the producer was instructed. Right. So. But, but somewhere along the way. I mean, there that was one of the rare times that he actually spoke with the interviewer, and I actually can't believe that he just told the interviewer how he was instructed not to call his music career a hobby. Like, no wonder this guy's had five different marriages. All failed. All failed. What a rude dude. In at number three, Tony Danza. Before an interview with a local news station even began, Tony Danza was caught just slamming the local news in very colorful language. Unbeknownst to him, everything he was saying was all airing directly to live television. And then to make matters even worse, the news anchor is desperately trying to get him to just shut up for a second. And when she finally got his attention and gently reprimanded him for his words, Tony Danza didn't even bother apologizing for the unkind words that he was using regarding this woman's profession. Tim, I'm telling you, this is crazy. I don't want to do this. Tony. I'm going to be part of the local news. How exciting. Nowadays, he would probably beg to be part of any news segment or interview for that matter, considering how this one stunt really sullied his acting career. In at number two, Hugh Grant. While some English accents may sound charming, Hugh Grant's personality canceled out all of that for Jon Stewart at The Daily Show. After appearing on the show, Jon Stewart said that he was banning Grant for being a big pain in the <laughs> Stewart continued saying that he would never grant him back on the show. Pun intended. During an onstage Q&A, John remarked that they've had dictators on the show, but Hugh Grant was still his least favorite guest. Apparently, Hugh spent most of the day just complaining that he even had to be there, and even flat out said that he had better things to do. For which the staff of The Daily Show didn't really care to hear, nor did Jon Stewart. So, thanks to his high maintenance attitude, he was banned from the show with zero apologies. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Pamela Anderson. I don't know if she was wasted or what, but right from the very beginning of this interview in 2006 with the comedian John Roe McManus, it was a disaster. Upon her introduction, she came running out with more energy than that time Tom Cruise jumped on Oprah's couch. Pamela greeted the crowd with a hair flip and then proceeded to toss a handful of green candy, I think they were M&Ms, doesn't matter, grabbed the whole handful, tossed them into the crowd. Candy that was plucked from a bowl at the table of the interview. Take a look at this. Oh, not M&M's. 
today. <laughs> and that's not all by the sounds of things. Although the real nail in her coffin was the drama that led up to this bizarre interview with the former Baywatch star. According to John, the show runs live and Pamela was late, so he actually had to start the show before she was even in the building. When she finally did show up, she really seemed like she was doing everything to hurry up the process and just get out of there. Multiple times he genuinely asked her if she was okay, but that only made things even more awkward. And thus her career was finished. He said dramatically. Starting off our list at number 10 is Jesse Eisenberg. The actor has always been called socially awkward and has always shown this not so welcoming attitude when it comes to the press. One of his awkward and demeaning interviews went viral back in 2013 when he did an interview with Romina Puga from Univision about his new movie coming out called Now You See Me. Yeah. I'll tell you the problem with the trick is that the thumbs don't tired. look like an end of a finger. You just yeah. have a fat thumb though. No, my thumb's fine, thank you, but. Romina had a few notes written on her hand so that she could remember them during the interview and he had no problem calling her out on them, saying that she can't remember a simple question and also told her that she is a horrible interviewer. What did you write on your hand? Nothing. Well, I saw there was a lot of things. What was a it? A lot of things. Are they questions? No. Are you secretly hiding questions <laughs> for the interview? You're wondering what it's like to work with Morgan Freeman and you can't wrote, remember that? Uh, His exact way of saying it was, he asked her if she knew the comedian Carrot Top. She responded with, yes, horrible. And Jesse said, I quote, well, you are like the Carrot Top of interviewers. The interview awkwardly continued on where he continued to make comments about the interview being over soon and also said that if she was trying to find her way in a crowd, he wouldn't actually want to find her and that he'd rather be alone. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well. Um, you were like the uh, carrot top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm a good go thing. Cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over. Well, isn't he just a ray of sunshine? People haven't received his interviews very well, and the majority of them can't get on board with his whole attitude and behavior. In at number nine is Paris Hilton. This interview was more of a chance for her to have a comeback in her career, which was already destroyed, but she just kind of blew it. After her career started to fade out, we didn't really hear much from her until 2011 when she signed up for an interview with ABC, which was meant to give us a look into her life and what she's up to now. The interview took place at her home, which started out great. We got to see her home, her dogs, and she just seemed to be in good spirits. That was until the reporter, Dan Harris, began to question whether her celebrity status was running out and being taken over by her close friend, Kim Kardashian. He worded it as nicely as possible, but she just couldn't handle the thought of it. He brought up the fact that her show called The World According to Paris had received a low rating and asked if that upsets her. You could clearly tell that it does, but she responds simply by just saying no. She begins to talk to her publicist who is standing off set saying that she wants to be done with the interview. She ends up walking off but her mic was still on and she told her publicist that she doesn't want any of this footage being used. Do you ever worry about your moment having passed? <laughs> you want to wrap up? Could I, would I was curious about one thing going back to... So, what do you guys think? Do you think she was acting like a diva by giving one word answers and leaving? Tell me down in the comments. Next up at number 8 is John Mayer. Back in 2010, he did an interview with Playboy where he sparked a heated debate among his fans and people lost a lot of respect for him. His relationships with stars like Jessica Simpson have all been documented in the tabloids, but he dished on their relationship in a very strange and disrespectful way. When asked about his ex, Jessica, he started to speak about their sex life, saying that she was like crack cocaine to him sexually. He said he wanted to snort her and would sell his belongings even if she charged him $10,000 to sleep with her. He continues to share how many people he's been sleeping with since the breakup and says he also spends a lot of his mornings watching porn in bed. If the sex talk wasn't enough to set off his fans, his comments about race would. He said, I'm just very. And if you can't handle my very, then I'm a douchebag. That's why black people love me. He went on to say that he gets a hood pass and refers to them as the n-word. Immediately after his interview was published, it caused tons of controversy where he was called an ass hat and became a trending topic, but not for the reasons that you really want to be trending. Sliding into number seven is Tom Cruise. We've seen him lose his temper on a few different occasions, so it's not much of a surprise that he's wound up on this list. He made comments that people didn't appreciate, like the time he criticized Brooke Shields for taking antidepressants. She took them for postpartum depression, but since Tom is a Scientologist, he doesn't believe in the those kinds of drugs or therapy. 
So during an interview back in June 2005 with NBC's Today Show, the reporter Matt Lauer asked him about his criticism and he didn't like that it was brought up. The actor ended up calling him a glib and told him he doesn't know what he's talking about. In anger, he said, you don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. He continued to discuss his Scientology beliefs, which causes enough controversy in itself, and said that because Lauer admitted to using psychiatric drugs in the past, he was actually advocating the use of Ritalin and that it's wrong. I've never agreed with psychiatry, ever. Uh, before I was a Scientologist, I never agreed with psychiatry. And then when I started studying the history of psychiatry, I started realizing more and more why I didn't agree with psychiatry. His anger, defensive mechanism, and attitude isn't a shock really, but it just still isn't necessary. At number six is Joan Rivers. The woman is known to be a harsh critic when it comes to her time on Fashion Police, but is it harsh if it's true? That is the real debate. Some people appreciate her brutal honesty, while others think that it's just straight up rude, which is the main reason why she went into a rage and walked out in the middle of a CNN interview back in 2014. She was doing a live stream interview with CNN host Frederica Whitfield, who started off by joking around saying that her show Fashion Police was mean, and that was enough to trigger Rivers. Everything from that moment on just escalated very quickly. CNN asked her why she fights to end animal cruelty while she still wears fur, and her response was, are you wearing leather shoes? Then shut up. The cover well, of your book, you're wearing a fur, and you knew that there would probably be animal rights activists. You know, this whole PETA. interview is becoming a defense of interview. No! Uh, are you wearing leather shoes? Yeah, and shut no, up. She then continued to go on a rant saying that the interview is turning into a defensive one and she insults the lady one last time before storming off set. She said, you are not the one to interview a person who does humor, sorry, and rips off her earpiece before leaving. And you do this and you're mean and you're that. You are not the one to interview a person who does humor, sorry. Are we serious? However, she didn't turn off her microphone, and after leaving the set, they recorded her calling the host the C-word. Her exit strategy wasn't thought out very well. How we do the list at number five is Jerry Seinfeld. Fans were shook when the hit TV series Seinfeld came to an end, and everyone was pointing the finger at Jerry, wondering what exactly happened. He didn't like that very much, and he lost his cool on Larry King back in 2007 when he asked him about it during an interview. He was live on CNN for the interview and was actually there to promote his new project, B Movie. Larry ends up asking him if he canceled the show or if the network canceled him. A pretty standard question to ask since the show was around for so many years and was coming to an end all of a sudden. But rather than simply answering him, he got extremely offended and started to become a bit ignorant. He made it clear that he had 75 million viewers and that it was his choice to quit. Larry tries to move on from the question when he sees his response, but Jerry continues to interrupt him even to a point where he can't cut to a commercial break when he is supposed to. 75 what? million viewers, okay. last episode. What are you telling me? Take it so bad. Well, that's a, a big difference between being canceled and being number one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> he even says the famous line, do you know who I am? You are do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> Jewish guy, Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. Fans responded to the interview saying that he overreacted and could have simply just answered the question gracefully. There was no point to prove. We clearly all know that your show was a success. All right, you guys, at number four, we have Mel Gibson. Are you shocked? No, didn't think so. He's known for having anger issues, and the majority of them it has been well documented through audio recordings or videos, so it's not like I'm just assuming all of this. One of his interviews went viral back in 2010 when we got to see a piece of his angry side come out. He was doing a live stream interview with WGN News, and the reporter Dean Richards asked him about some incidents from his past, like his alcohol use and bad temper. Four years prior to the interview, he was arrested and got a DUI, so he asked if he feels the public would receive him differently now. Mel was outraged by the question, which he showed by the expression on his face. He responded by saying, that's almost four years ago, dude. I mean, I've moved on. I guess you haven't. He ends up continuing and says, let's move on, dude. Come on. He doesn't say goodbye or anything as Dean ends the interview. He just gives a thumbs up and sips his coffee. And right after the interview ends, he calls Dean an not knowing that the video was still recording. It's good to see you back in the saddle and uh, doing what you do best. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye-bye. In spot number three is Tracy Morgan. It's hard to forget about the interview he did in 2007 when he was clearly drunk on camera. Ladies, <laughs> my Mercedes, I'm the Uchow. 
The reporter, Robert Holguin, seemed super uncomfortable and out of his element when dealing with him throughout the interview on ABC7. But he remained professional and was a good sport about it, laughing and making jokes with Tracy who was completely out of control. Morgan took his shirt off, which ultimately ripped his microphone off, and began slapping his belly, calling it a loaf of bread, and said it was his mating call. <laughs> Uh, so. Robert tried hard to keep the interview going and talking about his upcoming show, but Tracy was in his own little world. After the interview cut to commercial, you could hear Robert saying, I am going to get fired. At number two on our list is Roseanne Barr. She had an incredibly successful career, but it crumbled after she tweeted out some racist comments. She lost everything, including her ABC sitcom called Roseanne. She tweeted out a comment where she compared Barack Obama's advisor, Valerie Jarrett, to a character from Planet of the Apes and linked her to a group called Muslim Brotherhood. During an interview with Inside, she spoke about the incident with a cigarette in hand and lost all control of her emotions and began to scream. Like literally scream. She went off the rails yelling, I thought the b was white. She continues to scream out different curse words and in between takes a puff from her cigarette, maybe in hopes to try and calm down, which clearly didn't work. I thought the b was white! Damn it! This is her back? Seriously? Throughout the interview, she looks totally out of it and at time asks the producer, are you filming? The producer can't help but laugh at her erratic behavior and just keeps repeating himself, telling her that she's already explained this to them 300 times, but she just keeps going on about it and not gracefully. Taking our number one spot is Michael Jackson. Over 10 years ago, he was charged on different allegations of child sexual abuse that were filed against him. A documentary about his life, including these charges, was released and showed an interview where he made inappropriate comments that left people stunned. When speaking about his own children, he admitted during an interview that he allowed their friends to come over and sleep in his bed with him. Mm -mm. Ain't nothing normal about that. He explained that he doesn't see any problem with it because I quote, it's all very charming. The interviewer was baffled that he would be saying these things considering the allegations that were against him. But Michael stood firm on his beliefs and referred to the young children as his friends. He simply didn't see anything wrong with a grown man being friends with young children. After hearing these things come out of the singer's mouth himself, his reputation was never really the same after that. In at number 10, Tom Hiddleston. Back in June of 2016, it was announced that America's favorite villain, Mr. Tom Hiddleston, Sim was romantically involved with Taylor Swift. They were dubbed a celebrity name of Hiddle Swift and all seemed, well, well and good. Although in August of 2016, they were fighting over his scheduling with Thor Ragnarok in Australia. Then by September of 2016, they were over and both sides alleged that they dumped the other one. Tom said it was because he wanted to go more public with their relationship and Taylor Swift alluded to another reason for it ending in a song of hers, I guess. Either way, Tom was a bit shaken up by the whole situation and during an interview with GQ magazine, he kind of burned himself. I mean, he was trying to distract from the topic of Swift by sharing his recipe for bolognese, but Tom still managed to talk way too much about Taylor Swift. Even after the interview had finished, he apparently visited the reporter's door at 6 a.m. to further clarify things that he had said about her in the interview. In at number nine, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton not only became famous for being the great granddaughter of the guy who created Hilton Hotels, but she also invented the idea of influencers. She would tell the paparazzi where she was going to be and then end up all over page six whenever she did something crazy at a nightclub. Although she also had a brief stint acting in reality TV shows. In fact, for a while, she believed that she was the world's top reality TV star, even though her former friend Kim Kardashian was kind of on the come up. During one interview with ABC in 2011, she was doing her very best to stay calm as the reporter grilled her with questions meant to discount her worth in society. Then Paris was asked by the reporter if she felt like her career was over. And in response, she just walked right out of the interview. I mean, people were already feeling that her career was done, but nobody, I had guess, had the heart to tell her. So when she found out just as much, she left the interview, which kind of answered the question for us. In at number eight, Kathy Lee Gifford. Kathy is best known for her 15 year run on the talk show Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, which she co-hosted with Regis Filmin. She has also done some acting in a few films, but her primary focus has been working for live entertainment news shows. Although after she maybe had one too many glasses of wine, I don't know, I think they do a Today Show happy hour, she conducted a very embarrassing interview with Martin Short. Martin was coming on the Today Show to promote and it looks like Kathy didn't do her research beforehand. Martin's wife had passed away 
away two years prior to the interview and Gifford had no clue. She threw multiple questions about his wife and his relationship, but at no point did he have a chance to actually correct her. Although right before the commercial break, he definitely had to update her. I mean, she apparently profusely apologized for this big gaffe, but her career was already tanked at that point. And if not her career, at least her reputation. Hit at number seven, Crispin Glover. While Crispin Glover has never really been considered a typical leading man, he has certainly distinguished himself as one of the more intriguing personalities in Hollywood. His unusual characters and personal projects have inspired a cult-like following that has dubbed him both a madman and a genius. However, an interview back in 1987 stunted his career a little bit and we wouldn't see him on many late night interviews for a while. While speaking with David Letterman, Crispin showed up as Reuben. Reuben was a character that he was portraying in an upcoming film called Reuben and Ed. Although not a single soul told Letterman that this was the intended plan, so he was completely surprised when it happened. Sometimes that works, I mean, but in this case it was a disaster. The entire interview was just Dave trying to keep up with Crispin and his Reuben rants, but ultimately ended in Letterman just walking out of the interview. In at number six, Gary Coleman. First and foremost, rest in peace Gary Coleman. It, it was terrible to see this great actor's career be taken down and then ridiculed when he had to go get a regular job. I mean, before he passed, Gary did an interview in 2010 with The Insider and things got very heated. One of those hosts started asking him questions about his ex-wife Susan Price, but Coleman did not take this well. He began yelling expletives at the mortified host as he immediately departed the interview. It must have been a very touchy subject, but this is also a reminder of why it's important to brief guests with the questions that they'll be asked. I mean, these curveballs from reporters rarely lead to anything good, and Gary's interview is kind of proof of that. In at number five, Cara Delevingne. Let's just say her dry British humor was not really received by these happy-go-lucky morning news anchors at CBS Sacramento. I mean, at the start of the interview, she was asked some very dumb questions. I mean, for example, the film Paper Towns was based on a book, so they asked her if she had read the book, and then immediately after made a snide comment about her probably not having enough time to read. Now, Cara obviously takes offense to this, judging by her body language, but instead decides to flip it into a joke, saying that she didn't even read the script, just winged it. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. And the interview is actually take this as factual for a moment before her laughing kind of cuts the tension. That's not even the most awkward part of this interview, though. I think it probably is us. Yeah. <laughs> well, then on that note... We figured as much. We figured as much. We'll let you go, then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> After one interviewer asked her why she isn't as excited as her other interviews, she remarks that it's very early and that she thought it was going well, so again, jokingly, she said, it must be you. And the lady in the middle, oh my god, she sounded so bitter. We'll let you take a little nap and have a Red Bull? How about that? Yes. How about that level of professional journalism? Good morning, Sacramento. <laughs> Although ever since this interview, we haven't really seen Kara in any more movies, and even the ones that we have seen her in, it was like, yeah, well, uh, whatever. In at number four, Robert Pattinson. When the Twilight series was at its peak, Rob had to do a ton of press to promote the film, and his agent made it expressly clear to every single interviewer not to mention his rumored relationship. People were already speculating that Pattinson was dating co-star Kristen Stewart, but they definitely wanted to keep things as private as possible. However, when he went on air with Ryan Seacrest, things went sideways. As soon as Seacrest started asking about his rumored relationship, Rob's agent gave him the cue to leave the interview. Now, this didn't exactly destroy destroy his career, but it certainly put a bad light on the actor for being kind of so dodgy with questions. I mean, if he had have just stayed in the interview and just told Ryan that he didn't want to talk about it, I bet Ryan would have just moved on. I mean, Seacrest has been in that business for so long that he knows how to keep things professional. But I guess he missed the memo on not talking about the relationship thing. <laughs> what can you tell them about it? I also just love that you can see his agent in the back giving the old wrap it up signal to Ryan and he is definitely ignoring her. In at number three, Jim Carrey. While at the New York Fashion Week in 2017, Jim Carrey made a rare appearance and while walking down the red carpet, he did his best to avoid an interview with E! News. At first he kind of tried to twirl around a few times and not really stand still hoping that would work, but man, she was persistent. Carrey then says that he wanted to find the most meaningless event that he could go to and that's how he ended ended up there. The interviewer tries to keep the integrity of the event high and claims that it's a celebration of icons, for which Jim says, icons don't exist. I don't believe in personalities. I don't believe you exist. But there is a wonderful fragrance in the air. Before departing from this awkward interview, he leaves her with this nugget of truth. It's not our world. None That's of this is key. real? Nope. It was a while before we saw Jim Carrey again after that, but we're sure he wants it that way. I mean, it probably made keeping the Sonic live action film quiet a lot easier. 
In at number two, Mel Gibson. While promoting his film Edge of Darkness in a 2010 interview with WGN TV, Mel Gibson appeared like he really didn't want to be there. I mean, the best part was that he wasn't even physically there. He just was appearing via satellite because it was probably the fastest way to do this press run. Although among all of the questions that annoyed the actor, it was when he dove into Gibson's drinking that kind of really set him off. The reporter got even more bold by asking him about his previous anti-Semitic remarks, to which Mel replied that was four years ago and he had already apologized for that and the reporter sensing that Mel was about to cuss him out on live air he kind of shifted back to promoting the film good move although Mel Gibson thought that the interview had disconnected which resulted in some very troubling remarks to air live thanks a lot for joining us Mel take care bye bye Last but certainly not least on our number one spot, Courtney Love. Courtney Love has been a mess forever. She does not handle interviews with any ounce of grace, and her crashing an interview with Madonna kind of proves my point. Back at the 1995 MTV VMAs, the interviewer was engaged in a discussion with Madonna when he notices Courtney Love yelling from down below. He then invites her onto the interview platform, even at the behest of Madonna, and things immediately turn to the worst case scenario. She starts drunkenly throwing small items at Madonna, and then she kneels down on the ground and at that point, Madonna just walks off the stage. Courtney then stays and hijacks the entire interview, going on more drunken rants and just being generally all over the place. I mean, literally all over the place. And it turns out the guy should have just listened to Madonna and had security keep Courtney back. Then we wouldn't have had this. In at number 10, Quentin Tarantino. So it's my, it's my job to try and ask you to. And I'm shutting you know? your butt down. And that's, that's entirely <laughs> your, that's entirely this your, is a, your. What a line. I'm shutting your butt but down. Quentin Tarantino was having none of this interviewer's questions, but still trying to go along with it. He kept his cool for, oh, about three minutes before the gloves started to come off. The journalist's name is Krishnan Guru Murthy, and he has become notorious for asking celebrities the most awkward and really big questions about themselves, their past, and their work. Stuff that would be better suited for a three hour podcast or an episode of 60 Minutes. However, during these press junkets where they're only doing the interview to sell their film, it's hardly the place or time. In at number nine, Cara Delevingne. Let's just say her dry British humor was not really received by these happy-go-lucky morning news anchors at CBS Sacramento. At the start of the interview, she was asked some very dumb questions. For example, the film Paper Towns was based on a book, so they asked her if she had read the book, and then immediately after made a snide comment about her probably not having enough time to read. Kara obviously takes offense to this judging by her body language, but instead decides to flip it into a joke, saying that she didn't even read the script, just winged the whole thing. The interviewers actually take this as factual for a moment before her laughing finally cuts the tension. And that's not even the most awkward part of this interview, though. I think it probably is us. <laughs> Yeah. Well, then on that note, we figured as much. We figured as much. We'll let you go then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? After one interviewer asked her why she isn't as excited as her other interviews, she remarks that it's very early and that she thought it was going well, so again, jokingly, she says it must be you. And the interviewer in the middle, like, oh my god, she sounded so bitter. That line of, well, we'll let you go take a little nap and have a Red Bull, how about that? Yes, how about that level of professional journalism? Good job, good morning, Sacramento. In at number eight, Kourtney Kardashian. After her sister Kim was robbed in Paris, Today Extra, an Australian news outlet, was interviewing Kourtney via satellite from Los Angeles. Okay. They asked her how Kim was doing following this traumatic event, but suddenly Courtney's face just freezes. You then can sort of hear what sounds like her publicist saying, do not answer that question. Looks like uh, Courtney doesn't really want to go there with that question. I think she's question. blanking me. I think she's totally blanking I on that question. I think there's probably a PR person there saying, you know, don't talk about it. The interviewer then goes on a bit of a rant saying that she could simply say her sister is doing fine as they too speculate that she was told to be quiet. However, she then does answer the question on her own saying, she's not doing great, I think we're all still shaken up. And her response to what appeared to be her blanking was that the audio from their end wasn't coming through. In at number seven, Jesse Eisenberg. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes. Horrible. You were like the uh, carrot top of interviewers. No, it's a good thing. It's I'm gonna a good go thing. cry because... now. No, don't cry now. While promoting the film Now You See Me, Jesse Eisenberg just could not contain his utter disdain for this interview. Right out of the gate, he was on the offensive. The interviewer refers to Morgan Freeman as simply Freeman, for which Jesse takes offense to. Oddly enough, 
He then, as you saw, remarks she's the carrot top of interviewing, which insults the interviewer so bad that she hurries Jesse to complete a magic trick just so that they can wrap it up. And the entire interview is just one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen, and this is only number seven on the list. Trust me though, if you haven't watched this full interview, you must. You must do it. It is just a terrible exchange back and forth between an actor and a vlogger, essentially. In at number six, Samuel L. Jackson. When you are interviewing a celebrity as big as Samuel L. Jackson, it's imperative that you do your homework. You know, like, learn his name. When Sam Jackson was promoting the Robocop remake, he was asked about a recent Super Bowl commercial he did. Sam replies, what Super Bowl commercial? And then hits KTLA reporter Sam Rubin with this. What Super Bowl commercial? Oh. You know what? I've been my mistake. I, you know see what? what? See, you're you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Jackson then proceeds to say, "I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. We don't all look alike. We may be all black and famous, but we all don't look alike." And Ruben repeatedly apologizes for this very public faux pas, but the damage is done, and this just got super awkward. Jackson doesn't let up though. He questions Sam Ruben, saying, "You're the entertainment reporter." To make his point known, Samuel L. Jackson posted this image on Twitter of him wearing a t-shirt that says he's not Lawrence Fishburne. You know, just to avoid any further confusion. In at number five, Jim Carrey. At the New York Fashion Week in 2017, Jim Carrey made a rare appearance and while walking down the red carpet, he did his best to avoid an interview with E! News. At first he tried to kind of twirl around a few times and not really stand still hoping that that would work, but she was persistent. Carrey then says he wanted to find the most meaningless event that he could go to and that's how he ended up there. The interviewer, trying to keep the integrity of this event, I claims that it's a celebration of icons, for which Jim says, icons don't exist, I don't believe in personalities, I don't believe you exist, but there is a wonderful fragrance in the air. And before departing from this awkward interview, he leaves her with this little nugget of truth. Is relevant that's not that yeah. Here's uplifting. the thing, it's not our world. None that's of this is key. real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. In at number four, Dakota Johnson. This without a doubt has to be the cringe heard around the world. We got to watch the live falling out between Dakota Johnson and her mother Melanie Griffith on the red carpet of the Oscars. Oh, the Oscars, please insert fake laughter here. Man, Hollywood is so fake. Just because the cameras are rolling, they fake laugh their way through this entirely awkward interview. And the whole thing started off on a really bad note. The interviewer praises Melanie while repeatedly calling Dakota her little girl, which she is, but it just downplays how successful she's been on her own. Then when her mother is asked if she's seen Fifty Shades of Grey, her mom outright says that she wouldn't watch the movie, which clearly hurts her daughter regardless of the content and the positive reviews. A kid is always looking for that recognition from their parents. In at number three, Robert Downey Jr. This guy again. You remember that uh, interviewer from earlier that was just a little too pushing? Well, he's back again, but this time with RDJ. And didn't I tell you folks earlier that he was known for just having the worst interviewers? I mean, this guy should be questioning politicians, not actors about their upcoming movies. He goes way too deep with Robert Downey Jr. in this interview, to the point where Robert Downey Jr. just says, you know what, we're done here. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions. That's what right. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Oof. That slapped so hard it felt like a movie. Speaking of slaps, when Downey stands up to leave, he gives Krishnan a very hard pat on the shoulder as if to say, good work, you dummy. The reason why he got so upset was because these questions virtually came out of left field. He went from asking him about superhero movies to Robert's, let's say, tumultuous past. In at number two, Tom Hardy. If you thought that was hard to watch, just wait until you see this awkward interview with Tom Hardy. At the Toronto Film Festival during a press conference for his film Legend, he's asked by an LGBT news organization about his sexuality, claiming that while his character is upfront about it, Tom on the other hand has been much more ambiguous about his sexuality, which leads to this kind of terrible exchange. It's the epitome of awkwardness. Are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> why? Why? Um, Thank you. you. Okay. Why, why, why indeed. That thank you he gives at the end too, oof, I felt that, I felt that. 
Last but not least at our number one spot, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld is one of the most successful comedians of all time. His show Seinfeld was on television for 9 years and Jerry's decision to go out on top proved to be one of the most lucrative deals ever for this comedian. Since the final episode, the show has generated over 3 billion dollars in repeat fees but for whatever reason Larry King thought they cancelled the show. Even though Larry King worked for CNN, he wasn't known for his hard hitting questions yet for whatever reason he decided to use an interview promoting Jerry Seinfeld's B movie to ask him if Seinfeld had been cancelled. Is this still CNN? I was the number one show on television, Larry. You were Do you know who I am? And you can see in Seinfeld's body language how frustrated he gets when Larry even tries to insinuate this. Jerry does not back down though and immediately goes on the attack, telling King that he was the number one show on television before adding the very crass line of, Do you know who I am? What's the deal with you not knowing who I am? 